Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks for joining me this week. I'm going to take a quick break from all the hatching and stuff that's going on. In fact, this might even get interjected as a, an extra video in the middle of the week here for y'all because I'm just too excited not to share. So I hope you guys are ready to see something really cool, unique, and different from me. Stick around. Let's do this. All right, so this is a fun little uh, video, a little bit different than what I normally do. Um, quite excited on cloud nine this morning very inspired and i wanted to share with you guys some of something that has been uh, a long time coming very proud of my my hard work in this and i uh, figured maybe you guys could get some some beneficial information out of this so i would like to introduce you to some snakes that are not mine but have been here for about seven eight months this albeit going deep into shed is an el salvador blood boa male and obviously the camera's washing out all this red. He is going into shed. But these are one of those true dwarf locality species where the original blood bow was found. Now I've got 1.2 animals here that belong to my good friend Glenn Brooks. And these blood boas were uh, originally found from El Salvador uh, by Ron St. Pierre who then proliferated them into the hobby along with Vin Russo and a few other folks and proved out that it's a, a recessive trait that you can line breed to uh, improve as well. So this right here is a little male and uh, the reason I'm so excited today is because these guys are finally eating frozen thought. Now why is that such a big deal? Well it's taken me literally the last seven months to get these stubborn boas off of live. A lot of animals prefer live. My ball python folks out there, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. But even some of these rare locality boas that haven't been bred a ton, that are still very much closely connected to their wild counterparts, don't necessarily seamlessly take on to our husbandry, right? So Glenn doesn't have a, a readily available source of live rodents immediately near him without having to drive a little ways I do so I offered to take them on for him last year got them in let them settle for a few weeks and then my first priority was making sure they were comfortable eating live here so we did exactly that I'm gonna put this guy away and show you the heterozygous female all right so here's this beautiful female you can see she is not red but she has some beautiful color tones to her a little bit bigger than that male but again still very small these are dwarf boas that can breed at about four feet, so this is a, a really manageable species for those uh, those people who are looking into rare boas but don't want something big. So back to uh, my trials and tribulations. So this girl ended up being the last holdout, the most stubborn of them all. After a few meals of getting them on live, making sure they're eating here, decided to rip the bandit off, try some frozen thought. No surprise, none of them took. Instead of giving them something that they want to eat, I decided every time they're going to refuse, they're not going to get food. And we're just going to teach them. And eventually they will learn. So it took a few months, but eventually I started getting them to eat freshly killed rodents. Now I breed a small amount of my, my own mice supply here. I have access to more at work. So I was able to breed some mice and give them freshly killed as an alternative to live and once they started taking that I figured okay we've made our first milestone our first step off of live which is fresh fresh kill after that I started doing freshly killed but then putting some of the dirty mouse bedding from my live colony in with the freshly killed just to really hammer home some scent made sure everybody was eating those check that off on to the next one so the next step after they're eaten frozen or uh, fresh killed with with scenting is to then do frozen thawed with that same scenting now, as you notice I'm trying to always keep one consistent variable in there and do these little micro baby steps for them that one took a while the first I'd say first two months only one of them would take and then after that two of them would take 
and all of the while I'm not taking these animals out, I'm not holding them, I'm not picking them up, I'm not taking them outside, I'm doing literally nothing. I'm ignoring them other than cleaning water, spot cleaning, and feeding every other week. Keeping them hungry and just trying to let them chill. So after they all started eventually taking frozen thawed with bedding, well, actually, I should say that none of them were doing that all at the same time. The two bloods, the female blood and the male blood, they got with the program pretty quick. They started eating um, frozen thawed in mouse bedding. But this one right here was our little holdout for a while. Then, a couple weeks ago, I offered everybody frozen thawed without mouse bedding, and nobody took. And I thought, well, that doesn't make sense. I've been making tons of progress. Well, it turns out literally everybody was in shit. That's how little I check them. So then after that, gave them two weeks off, tried again, and I had a good feeling that they were gonna eat. Both bloods grabbed frozen thawed, scented, and their actions were consistent. They were strong, they were confident feed. They grabbed, wrapped instantly, made me feel pretty good. They ended up eating, this one did not. Fast forward to last night, give everybody their their frozen thawed, those two bloods since they had eaten, you know, the last couple weeks in a row, some frozen thawed with scenting, I decided let's just do straight frozen thawed, no scenting. And then let's do some scenting and frozen thawed with this one. Woke up this morning, lo and behold, everybody ate. So, seven months later, from being picky about eating live to not only taking live, taking fresh killed, and now eating frozen thawed. So I'm gonna do probably one more round of feeding for them, see if they'll move up on a size, because I was just doing hoppers, keeping it really small and not unassuming so they wouldn't be scared. And uh, yeah, seems to be going well. So next up is probably uh, adult mice. And uh, yeah, very excited that these are eating frozen thawed. I'm sure Glenn will be very happy that they're eating frozen thawed so he doesn't have to worry about getting mice live and potentially chewing on his snakes. But it's been fun getting to, to work with some boas again. So anyway, just thought I would share that fun little, little story. It's taken me seven months to write and uh, just goes to show you that you can be more determined than than their instincts will will key them in. You can you can work with their brain and you can get them thinking and get them switched over. No problem. It just takes a little bit of persistence and time and patience. So, alrighty, enjoy a quick look at this girl. I'm gonna wrap up. Hope you guys got some good benefit and info out of this, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.